The beauty of the genetic patterns discovered by Gregor Mendel lie in their simplicity and in how much his observations tell us about genetic inheritance. The foundation of Mendel's work are three features of inheritance. The first is the existence of dominant traits. Mendel discovered that there are certain characteristics or traits that when received from a parent will always be expressed. In this example, the yellow pigment trait carried by parent two is dominant over green. So an individual receiving the yellow trait will always be yellow, masking the presence of the green pigment gene variant received from parent one. The second important feature of inheritance that Mendel discovered is the principle of segregation. Individuals receive one copy of every gene from each parent. As a result, all individuals have two copies of every gene. When an individual reproduces, it passes only one of these copies to each of its offspring. The principle of segregation states that the distribution of an individual's gene variants to its offspring is random. Every offspring has an equal chance of receiving one or the other gene variant. The second copy each offspring receives depends upon the gene variants carried by the other parent. The third principle is that of independent assortment. When the study of inheritance is expanded to consider more than one trait, the principle of independent assortment states that the gene variant an individual offspring receives at one gene locus is independent of the variant it will get at the other locus. Consistent with the random nature of the principle of segregation, all gene variant combinations are equally likely to occur. In modern terminology, what Mendel discovered was the fact that all individuals carry two alleles for each gene. During sexual reproduction, the process of gamete production and fusion results in individuals getting one allele from each parent. It is common to use a single letter abbreviation for each allele. A dominant trait is given a capital letter, and the recessive trait is given the same letter in lower case. This way it's easy to look quickly and determine an individual's genotype and phenotype for this trait. One dominant and one recessive allele would make an individual heterozygous at this locus, and the presence of one dominant allele would give it the dominant phenotype. Two dominant alleles would make the individual homozygous dominant at this locus and give it the dominant phenotype. And finally, two recessive alleles would make the individual homozygous recessive at this locus and give it the recessive phenotype. Mating two individuals to study the way traits combine across generations is called performing a cross. Understanding the implications of independent assortment, segregation, and dominance makes it possible to predict the probability that a particular cross will produce specific genotypes and phenotypes. With the genotypes of the parents of each cross determining the combinations possible and the probabilities of each combination arising in the offspring. Not all genes have alleles that exhibit the dominant recessive expression patterns. Other patterns are co-dominance and incomplete dominance. The difference being that in co- and incomplete dominance, heterozygous individuals exhibit intermediate phenotypes, while the presence of dominant alleles completely mask the presence of recessive alleles at the same locus. The traits Mendel studied in pea plants, such as flower color, seed color, and seed pod shape, did have dominant and recessive alleles and the ability of the dominant traits to mask the presence of the recessive alleles helped Mendel discover these fundamental patterns in genetic inheritance. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.